Hello students, in this video we'll discuss finding a scalar potential of a vector field if the vector field is conservative. We recall a vector field V is called conservative if the curl of V is equal to zero. This is one condition which tells me a vector field is conservative. Or it's conservative if another condition is true if v is the gradient of phi for some scalar function phi for some scalar phi. In this video, we'll see how to find such a scalar function if the vector field is conservative. So here's an example. Let's be given v of x, y, and z. And v is going to be equal to 2xy, and then x squared, and then e to the z. Let's check to see if this vector field is conservative. So we need to check the curl of 0, but there's also a more elementary test. If this is my f, and this is my g, and this is my h, we need three conditions to be true, which is equivalent to the curl being equal to 0. We need that f partial f partial y is partial g partial x. Let's see if that's true. Well, partial f partial y in this example is 2x. Partial g partial x is 2x, so that works. We need partial f partial z to be partial h partial x, partial f partial z to be partial h partial x. Well, let's see what it is. The partial f with respect to z is nothing. Is that equal to the partial of h with respect to x, which is also nothing, so that works good. And the final condition we need is that partial g partial z is partial h partial y. Let's check and see if this is true. So those are my three conditions to determine if a vector field is going to be conservative or not. Well, partial um, z partial z Partial g, partial z is 0. Is that equal to partial h, partial y? That's also 0, so in fact it's true. Good. Now we have that the vector field is conservative. Let's find the potential function, the scalar potential function. So we know that 2xy x squared e to the z is equal to the gradient of phi for some scalar function phi. And this is phi x, phi y, phi z. So let's take any one of the equations and integrate it. So I'm going to do a partial integral, so that tells me that phi x is equal to 2xy. So let's do a partial x integral. If we do a partial x integral, I can conclude that phi of xyz is equal to a I'm only integrating with respect to x. So I'm going to integrate 2xy with respect to x. That will give me x squared y plus a constant. And the constants in this problem, since I'm doing an x integral, are y and z. So my constant is actually a function of y and z. So what we can do now is we can say, well, how can I find this c of y and z? Let me take the derivative of phi with respect to y. So the derivative of phi with respect to y will be x squared plus partial c partial y. Now we know what phi sub y is. Phi sub y, according to our equation, phi sub y is x squared. So this is x squared. Now there's an x squared on both sides of the equation, so they will cancel out. And our conclusion, therefore, is that partial c partial y is equal to 0, which says that c as a function of y and z has a 0 derivative with respect to y, which means that c is only a function of z. That means that c of y and z is actually only a function of z, because the derivative with respect to y of a function of z is equal to 0, since y and z are independent variables. Now I use my final statement. So I can update my phi, my phi updated phi of x, y, z is now updated to x squared y, x squared y, plus a constant which depends on z. The final step in this is that I'll differentiate this new updated phi with respect to z. That's the only thing I haven't done yet. I looked at phi x, and I looked at phi y. So finally, I look at phi z. So partial phi, partial z. According to this formula, that's going to be gone. It's just going to be c prime of z. So c prime of z has to be equal to what? Well, c prime of z has to be e to the z. So that tells me that c of z 
is equal to e to the z plus a constant. And this is the constant, which can be whatever you want. Shifting a potential function by a constant doesn't change it at all, plus any constant I want. So let's just pick my favorite number, 421, for example. That would work. And we can conclude from this that the scalar potential is x squared y plus e to the z plus whatever constant you want. Pick your favorite number, and you can put it there, and it will work for your potential function. So there's infinitely many potentials, but they're all parameterized by a single constant over here. So this is how we find the scalar potential of a conservative vector field. Thank you very much.